Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Gen AI Vlog. So previous episodes, we talked about building this app locally, package up using Docker desktop, and then push the image up to container instance. That's then backing up this web app. So user can access it using an API, and we essentially have the structure ready. So now what we're going to do is to pretty much inject more functions, more subsections, pages onto this web app so that the user can have more capabilities at the tip of their finger. So with that being said, let's jump right in. We're actually going to have chatbot to give us a dongle button. That's the Python script that the chatbot recommended. So previously we talked about how you can use a chatbot as a recommendation provider of some sort of Python code, uh, like a programming assistant, things like that. Here, we're gonna be taking it just one step further. So what we wanna do is we wanna build a download button such that if there's Python code being talked about in the response, the user can then use the download button to download the Python code in that conversation. So how do we do that? Let's start with the helper functions. The first helper function that we need is called isolate and save Python code. So it's going to take an input string as an input argument and then a file path as a second input argument. And the input string is essentially what the chatbot gave us as a response. Like for example, it's going to say, hey, here's a recommendation of Python code. And then it actually physically say a bunch of stuff in the Python programming language, right? And it's separated using uh, three dots, Python, and then another three dots, right? So in other words, this is the pattern that we can use to help the chatbot, to help the agent understand what exactly is it that we are trying to isolate and we are trying to save, right? We don't want to save the whole conversation in the download button as a Python script. That wouldn't work, right? Because the whole conversation, including natural language, that's right? not Python programming language. So this is the pattern that we use. We do a search using regex and whatever that's being matched, right? We call that the Python code. And then we can write that Python code locally according to some sort of path. Now, of course, uh, we are assuming that this file path is ending up with .py as its name. Otherwise, it's no longer a Python script. So that's the first helper function that we need. And then on top of that, we have two helper functions to help us coin the name. For example, uh, here's a random string that is length of 20. That's a mixture of letters and digits. And then on top of that, we have the current date. Uh, so this is going to give us the date in terms of year, month, date, format. And we're going to use these two helper functions to give us a unique file path. On top of that, we have a helper function called download button that's coded into Streamlit application using Streamlit download button. And this download button give user the ability to download the Python script. So now all these helper functions are done. We just need to invoke it. So let's come back to the conversation a little bit. So this section, we react to the user input. So when user is talking to us, we want to make sure we append everything, right? So let's jump right into the chatbot part. So this is a chatbot being instantiated. We throw in the entire history, and then the chatbot is able to generate some sort of response. Of course, you want to display the response so the user can see what you're talking about, and then you save it so that the history can continue to grow. Great. So all that's been talked about in previous episodes. What we need to do from here is to isolate the Python code, right? So we detect it. We say, hey, look, you know, if this pattern dot 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 Python exists in the response string, we then invoke a bunch of functions. So what we mean by that is if there's dot dot Python involved, then there's a high likelihood that the response is indeed talking about some sort of Python code in there. So let's create a name, right? Random string, date string, things like that. And then that gives us a unique Python script. And then we just need to use this isolate and save Python code function. Throw those two variables in there. And this function will save a .py script using this name that we define above locally. Now, when I say locally, it's actually on a temp folder because this is a serverless application. So it doesn't really save it anywhere 
on a computer somewhere because the app is serverless. In other words, to access the script, we really need a download button, which is what this last line of code is doing down here. So the download button is going to take this file path and then take that content of the file path, throw that in the button for you to use it. And that pretty much wraps up the code. So this is the agent by programmer, right? That is a helper function, as we talked about previously in the sections. We throw everything in this big function so that we can call it. Uh, now that the function is defined, we actually need to call the whole thing. So let's go back to app.py. In the beginning, we say from sections, agent programmer, import star. And the star basically means import every function in that script. So now we are all set. To make our lives easier, here, I actually created a sidebar selection box. So in this case, we have all these pages being defined. And user can select any pages using the key. Uh, the key is talking about this page nums to func, dictionary object. And the key refers to software engineer basics, basic chat GPT, Python agent, things like that. And you kind of get the idea, right? The design here is self-coded in a way that if you have a new agent or if you have a new chatbot or whatever, and you can just increase content here as a new object in this dictionary. Great. So once that's being defined, the user can then go to the selection box and make the selection and that will be saved in the demo name. And then the page nouns font will grab that demo name and then we'll invoke it. And you see this parenthesis here, but that basically means we're invoking that function. So that is all up at the front end and you are all set. Now, let me show you guys the test and let's see how it works. So first thing I need to do is to build the image. So I'm gonna say Dr. Build, I'm gonna tag it. Let's just call it hello world. And I'm gonna say dot to imply this is the main directory. So we're done. And then let's do a Docker run. We use P to mean the port range. External is 8501, colon internal is also 8501. And then obviously we're gonna call the app name, which is hello world. Hit enter. This is gonna fire up an app. You can of course access the app using this URL, or you can go to your Docker desktop. You can see this one down here that's already up and running. That's seven seconds ago, because I just initiated this run. Click on this link. You'll be able to see this kind of a user interface. Of course, there's a sidebar. You can go in here. We talked about all that before. You can then log in using default username and password. Hit enter. It'll take you to the default page, which is Software Engineer Basics. And then that's because that's the first option here. Now, the option that we're talking about in this episode is Python Agent. So click on Python Agent. That brings you to a different chatbot. And then you can talk to it, right? You can say, write a Python function for me to find the nth Fibonacci number. Hit enter. And then let's see what does it do. It gave you a function and it gives you a download Python script that you can download. So press on that. It will trigger this window. I'm just going to put it in my download folder as a demo purpose. So we're going to hit save. And then let's go back to the terminal just for a little bit. Open up a new terminal. And then this is my download folder. Uh, let's go in there. See at 12.05, that new script is saved here. And that makes sense because right now on my computer is 12.06. So let's take a look at what that script looked like. 2024 underscore 09 underscore 28. That's my script. So hit enter. You see that here it gives me the Python function. And then we want to test out the function. And then maybe we have a number here. Uh, print out the number, print out the results, things like that. Great. So now the script is here. We can execute the program, right? Let's test it out. So we can say Python 2024. We run it and boom, there you go. It will say the 10th Fibonacci number is 34. So now this kind of gives you an idea, right? From this chatbot, you can program for you and you can then have a download button, right? And once you download a file, you can bring it to any directory you want. In this case, I'm in my download folder, but it could very well be whatever main directory, helper script, utils, folders, whatever software program that you're developing, it could very well be that function, right? You just need to give the correct prompt such that it creates that function for you. 
And then this is also beneficial in terms of saving you a labor cost because this function is a Fibonacci. It's kind of like six, seven lines of code. It's not that complicated. But what if this function is 500 lines of code? And in the old days, it probably takes one or two programmers a few hours to develop. Well, good news is we can probably have a first draft coming out in a few seconds. And instead of having two developers, now you just need one developer to read the draft to prove this draft and then to fix it locally. And then you can run the program just like what I'm doing here. So now with all that being said, let's get this onto the cloud, shall we? So first thing I need to do is go to my container registry, go to access keys, and then I need to make sure I'm logged in. So grab the login server, and then let's go to VS Code. Now let's do a Docker login. And boom, there you go. It's logging successfully. If this is the first time you are doing this, please make sure to go to the previous video. It will show you how to find the logging username and password. Now that we're logged in, we can now push the image onto the cloud, right? So let's do that. First thing we need to do is to tag it. So Docker tag, hello world. And then let's tag with a particular name. So we're going to say the login server and then slash hello world. And then here, the go-to practice is colon latest version number. And in my case here, you can see that I have V1234. So the next version is going to be V5. So let's call it V5. Let's hit Enter. Now this image is successfully tagged. The last thing to do is Docker push. So we're going to say Docker push. And then we're going to paste the server login here, slash hello world. And then make sure we have latest V5 which is the correct tagging number. Let's hit Enter. And this will push the image onto the Azure Container instance. Great, once this is done, let's go to the Azure Cloud to take a look. Let's refresh. And as you see here, there's a V5. That makes sense, because I just did this. So now that this image is tagged correctly, and this image now lives on the Azure Cloud, we then need to go into the app to make sure that it's configured to point to this particular image version number. So let's go to our web app. Let's go to Deployment Center. And then let's scroll down. You can see that's the image. That's correct. And then under tag, you want to use the drop down button to select the correct one. In our case, it's V5. And then we say Save. And you are all set. And once it says Saving Container Configuration Successfully, we can then navigate to Overview. And then you want to make sure this app is up and running by pressing the Start button. As a personal habit, I typically have a habit of stopping it after I use it, just to make sure to preserve the cost a little bit. And once it's up and running, you can use a default domain to open up the app by clicking on this button. So let's make sure this URL is live. So let's go to an incognito window, paste it here, and then let's see if it's running. Great, now this is up and running. Let's log in with default username and password. Awesome, so now we're logging with the default page, Software Engineering Basics that we talked about in previous episodes. You can log out. Of course, you can go to different page. In this video, we talked about Python agent. So we're gonna click on that. And then you see this user interface that says just chat. So now let's see if we can throw in a couple of questions. Write a Python code for me to find the 20th Fibonacci number. So let's see what it say. Great, there's a function, and then there's a download Python script. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting, right? Let's say the following. Great, I want to have a input function so that user can enter an integer and the function can take the integer as input to find the nth number. Update the code for me. I hit Enter. And then hopefully, it will give me the correct code, right? With an input, so user can pretty much enter whatever they want. Of course, we assume it's an integer. We check the data type. It's making sure it's an integer. And then we invoke the function. In the end, we print out the answer. And then here's a download button. So this is not just talking to us, give us advice. It actually tells us how to execute it, right? So it's kind of like an advanced consultant sort of role here. Great. That's what agent should be doing. 
So let's use this button, click on it. It will trigger a window. And we're just going to save me our download folder for simplicity. Here, the last four letters is P-A-A-H. So we're just going to memorize that. Save. Let's go to our terminal. Go to our download folder. Let's do an LS. See that at 1214. This is 2024, September 28th. And this P-A-A-H.py script is right here. So let's take a look at the contents, right? So CAT 2024 underscore zero nine underscore 28 underscore zero. Boom. So this gives you the Python script that we just created, right? So what does it say? It says there's a function, there's input, there's uh, invoking the function, and then that's print out the final answer. Awesome. So we have a plan, right? Now let's execute it. So we're going to say Python, enter. It's going to ask me what is the value. That makes sense, right? Because here the input means that the user has to enter something. Great. This is awesome. So I can say 13. So now to print out the final answer to be 233. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.